Hi folks, Kevin here. Uh, just want to uh, make a quick video uh, regarding our tomato cages that we decided to uh, create for, for the property. Not just for tomatoes, tomatillos, any large bushy type plant that's going to grow up and need extra support, especially when it, when it starts bearing fruit. Uh, in the past I've used the cattle panels that I've made the hoops out of, you know, with T-posts in and uh, not making a hoop for the uh, for the bushy species, but just having the cattle panel go along the edge of it and have the plant grow up to it and tying it up. That got to be a lot of work and m much of our fruit uh, uh, ended up being right on the ground because we just couldn't keep up with it. Uh, so I've seen other people use these uh, concrete reinforcing mesh uh, for their tomato cages and tomatillos and so on. And uh, I saw it on Texas Prepper 2, uh, a YouTube video. And, uh, and I can't remember all the details, but let me just say, yesterday or the day before yesterday, I went out and bought three rolls. And the rolls are, are uh, five foot tall and or five foot wide and 150 feet long and the size that I'm making the tomato cages is 23 inches almost two feet in diameter which works really well in our weed mats as well and how I'm trying to keep them in place is using one section uh, one four foot section I'm sorry one five foot section of half inch rebar that's driven down through the mat, through the compost, uh, and into the subsoil. Uh, so I get uh, 20 foot lengths of, I use my trailer, which I'm working on today to make the tomato cages. I get 20 foot lengths of rebar. My trailer's 12 foot and I put some, build up a top on it so I can carry the 20 footers. Uh, those 20 footers, I cut them into 5 foot lengths, so I get 4 5 foot lengths of rebar. And I think one rebar section will probably support these cages since they're 2 foot in diameter, uh, or 23 inches. Let me grab my gloves. Uh, I'm not sure how well everything's going to show up on here. So this is one of the cages here, and uh, this concrete reinforcing mesh you can get at Lowe's, Home Depot, and certainly at your, uh, your concrete supplier or even your builder supply locations. Uh, they do weigh probably 150 pounds, uh, the, the roll of mesh at Lowe's, I think it was $107 for the roll, and I get 23 sections out of it that are this size. The holes in the mesh, I'm hoping this shows up, are six inches by six inches, which really allows you to get in there and, uh, and, and the cages end up being five foot tall. So I can get in there and work my way from the very bottom and even pull the whole plant to one side, pull up that branch that's coming up and get it to a location that really is going to allow it to grow and keep the plant somewhat centralized. So the whole plant can shift back and forth in there. So I really like something about two foot in, in diameter. Uh, it's 23 inches though. There's a lot of ways of, of creating uh, these cages, making it different diameters and all, and how you affix them. Now, I'll show you how I, how I affix, how I actually do it here in just a moment. I'm just gonna make the camera uh, zoom back a little bit or just down, uh, turn the angle so that you can see better. But uh, if you needed, the one of the big drawbacks to a cage like this is the way that I'm making them, they're almost permanent in this shape. So you need some place to be able to store them during the winter months. And here we get a lot of snow. So I think what I'll do is I'll put these out underneath my solar panels in a couple of sections there. And uh, so I'll have 69 of these cages that, that I'll have, have made. And uh, I think you can modify it a little bit by when, when I cut the section, instead of cutting it a full length, uh, just cutting it one third of the length and then curling it. And then you can basically unspring it and flatten it out as well. I want to do as little with these cages once they're made <laughs> as possible. Uh, the material 
is can scratch you and that's why I'm wearing long pants and should be wearing long sleeves, should be wearing safety glasses. Uh, how do I cut it? Well, I'm using my uh, 30 inch and you can use smaller than this, probably 24 inch. Uh, I call them bolt cutters. Uh, this one I got on Amazon. Uh, this one works very well. It won't do half inch rebar. My 36 inch will cut the, the half inch rebar. Okay, I think I gave enough of an explanation what I'm going to do. And I think I'm going to try and change the angle. Well, can we see the back of that trailer? I'm hoping this is going to turn. I'll try it from this angle first. So I have the roll in the back of the trailer, which is hard for you to see, and I keep pushing it back with a 2x4 as I move along. And I grab a hold of the end of it. So I've cut these uh, vertical, which end up being vertical, right here it looks horizontal, uh, crossbars here. These are all uh, six inch on center, so I want to be able to count, to make sure I've got uh, 14 of these sticking out. This stuff has excellent memory, so what it'll do is it'll try and spring back up. So I'm using a four by four here, a four by four here. <laughs> I'm going to just try and straighten this out for a moment. Just roll the roll back. So now the roll is rolled back in the trailer uh, several feet, enough for the next section. And uh, I'll grab my bolt cutters. Oh, I want to mention this first. So when the, uh, when the roll first comes, this is the end of a roll, it'll have about one, one and a half or two inch, it's almost cut in the center here in some of them, uh, tabs sticking out. And I completely cut those off. And then I'll show you how I cut them off on the next section. By, I hope I'm in the frame. By cutting them off right even with the bar, or just a little tab, it's, it's, it's much safer to work with. So now I'm going to go ahead and count 13 of these cross members. One, two, three. So here's the 13th one. And when, when the 13th one is touching the first one, that gives us almost a two foot diameter. But I'm going to cut it right here so I have the part to bend over to connect to it. So I'm going up to the 14th one. Pardon my backside. <laughs> this last one because there's so much memory in this metal. I'm going to be real careful because things can spring up. I'll put my foot to hold the other part so it doesn't fly up. And I'll put my bolt cutters on here because this may go right up. Now, let me readjust the camera here some. Now, if I start wiggling this so much, that those tabs can come up and hit me right in the eye. I hope this is showing up. So I'm going to pull the 4x4 back, and some of the memory is gone out of the end of this, so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and do a little bit of a recurling at the end. And that's all it takes. Grab a hold of this thing. 
want to be careful when you're doing this. this. So now what I'll do, I have the end with the flat bar going across away from me, and I have the ends with the tabs towards my knees, and I just curl it down. I hope this showed up. I'll grab the first tab, bring it down, and bring it back to itself. See if I can try and zoom that in, see if you can see that. <laughs> Sorry, it looks kind of goofy when I'm doing it. That little tiny viewer screen is hard to see back there. But I'll grab that tab, pull it down, bring it back to itself. And they all pretty much end up going on the one side of it, the, the lower side, until I get to the bottom. And the bottom one, I just curl inward, bring it around, and I just give it a push downward. Now this one's assembled. Now each one of these tabs I'm just going to pull back. Now, okay. Try to make this tab show up. So now here's a close up of that wire tab, as you can see how they are. These could be cut off, you know, at, at, you know, three quarters of an inch and then you could pull this back together you know if these were all cut short and po possibly unfold it the other possibility instead of uh, leaving these tabs on just cutting it off flush at the 13th bar then you just use like a wire tie to hold these two bars here together so Oops. So I hope that may make sense. Uh, let me just grab the camera and tripod here for a second. And so So there's a couple of the tomatoes inside of the uh, these tomato cages that I'm making there. And I didn't get to making these right off the bat, so the deer came through here <laughs> and chopped a lot of them right off. So we're using these on the other side for the tomatillos as well. Uh, I'll just walk over to the hoop for a moment. Apologize for the motion here. Here are a bunch of the cages I've made. And this is a hoop, and this is uh, cattle panels. Excuse me, I have to turn off the water for this. I forgot I had it on. So this is about 70 foot long. It's made of cattle panels, which are either 48 to 52 and a half inches wide, like the hog panels, heavier duty ones are I think 52 and a half inches wide. These ones are about 48 inches wide. Just if when you do build these, if you do build them, uh, make sure you space your T-posts correctly so that they get connected. And I've, I've gone to putting the T-posts on the inside of these hoops now 
uh, so that I can potentially put plastic over the top of it and uh, get an earlier start on all my uh, seedlings uh, in the spring. Uh, and I won't go into too much of that, but these cattle panels, just leaving them four foot high, putting your T-post down, down the length of the, that to support them, uh, you certainly can grow your tomatoes and other bush type plants, but you've got to be able to be out there and tie them to it because as they grow, especially when they start producing uh, you know, the fruits and vegetables that you're desiring so much, they'll be on the ground in no time. So I think these tomato uh, cages will work much better. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a great day. Thank you.